Earlier this week, we finally built up the 2018 Aventa Matero because they finally sent a review bike. And if you haven't seen that video yet, you can go ahead and pop on over there so you can get a baseline of what I think about the Matero. So without further ado, let's take this Aventa Matero out for its maiden voyage. So how does the 2018 Aventa Montero ride? Today I did a 25-ish mile ride with it. Number one, it's super stiff. Number two, my thighs are sore. So that tubing with all of its exotic shapes and tapers actually makes the bike pretty dang stiff. And whether stiffness actually makes a bike faster is one of the most hotly contested issues. So I will say that it's stiff but I will not say that it is faster because of it. What I can say though does make the bike faster is its gear ratio. It's 48-15 and that's why my thighs hurt. And this gear ratio doesn't seem like the most practical for street riding which most people who buy this bike are going to be doing. Even here in Sacramento where it's almost entirely flat, I felt that 4815 was just too big. The extent of the climbing that I did was just some rolling hills along the trail on the river and even then it felt like a slog getting the bike up some of those hills with the 4815 ratio. So I can't really imagine how you would even deal with the stock ratio if you actually have real hills and mountains where you live. The Aventa Matero's stiffness is definitely going to take some time for me to get used to. On my initial ride, every pedal stroke when I was sprinting would jolt the bike back and forth. And I consciously had to counteract how much it was jolting. And of course, the front end is pretty stiff as well. It does have a tapered head tube and tapered fork. So because of that, you can really swing and sway the bike back and forth when you're sprinting with the handlebars. And of course, those handlebars are 31.8 millimeters, which indeed are stiffer. I personally don't like super stiff bikes and it's going to take some time for me to adjust. Right now, it feels like I have to fight the bike when I'm riding it and the movements don't really feel natural to me. It's kind of like riding a bucking wild horse. You can go fast on it for sure, but it's going to be one bumpy ride. All that stiffness makes the Matero really chattery on rough pavements and railroad tracks, curbs, or speed bumps are super jolting. Today I did about 25 miles on mostly smooth pavement on a really nice bike trail that just goes along the river. Even then I felt like the bike was too stiff and for the very first time my back muscles feel like they are worn out after that ride. Of course I personally just don't like super stiff bikes, but a lot of you do. And if you're looking for that, the Matero will definitely be stiff enough. As for the crank set, it is 144 BCD, but that doesn't automatically make it a good crank set. It feels very similar to most of the other crank sets that I've tried that come stock on complete bikes. It may be marginally stiffer. With that said, I've had no issues with pedal strike even with extra large toe clips. And you can take hard corners, but for me, I just had to really consciously lean into them. As for comfort, the riding position is actually surprisingly upright on the Matero. It does have a seven degree stem, and I might just flip that over to negative seven to see if that makes it ride more aggressively. But because it is so upright and it has compact drops, it's pretty comfortable to stay in the drops for the majority of your ride. And as always with saddles, they're hit or miss. This one happens to work for me. It has the perineum cutout, which tends to make saddles more comfortable for a lot of people. And one of the things that really set this bike apart for me was that seat clamp and that aero seat post. I did have some worries about it, whether the seat post would slip, and it initially did slip, but that was my fault. That was because I didn't sufficiently tighten it. But once I did, I didn't have any issues with it. Although the Matero does come stock with a CNC cog, which 
should run smoother than stamped cogs. The entire drivetrain, when it comes together, didn't exactly feel the smoothest. In particular, I think it's the chain ring that is causing some friction in the drivetrain. It's not the smoothest in the world, but it's totally rideable. And who knows, I might just need to like break in it a little bit and it'll smoothen out over time. So far, the spec sheet that I was really excited about hasn't disappointed me in that all the components are just really high quality. It's just that the Matero is a bit too stiff for me and I haven't adjusted to it yet. But in addition to just having really solid components for the price, what surprised me is Aventon's attention to detail when assembling these bikes. Firstly, the cog is CNC'd. Most bikes come with stamped cogs, and a CNC'd cog will be smoother and more durable. Also, the cog and lock ring were properly greased and tightened, which is very rare for complete bikes. And of course, the chain is as short as possible, so you can slam that rear wheel in the seat tube cutout. And on top of that, there's some other little nice things like that textured faux leather bar tape. The tire logos are centered over the valve stems and there's centering markers on the handlebars to help you to easily install them. All of these small things separately don't really make or break the bike, but when you add them all up together, it does make a difference and overall it just makes the bike feel like it's a lot higher quality. And of course, this isn't definitive, but overall I would say if you're looking for a stiff aluminum fixed gear bike, the Aventa Matero is pretty good for the money. Of course, that may change for the full review. And if you want to see the full review for the Aventa Matero, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And while the Aventa Matero is definitely going to take some time for me to get used to, a bike that just felt right to me right off the bat was provided by the channel sponsor, Wabi Cycles. And that is my new daily bike, the Wabi Special. Out of all of the bikes that I've ridden and reviewed, Wabis have been my favorite because they're made out of lightweight top shelf steel. That gives the bikes a springy and lively ride quality while still maintaining the right amount of stiffness. Pretty much Wabis are hands down the nicest riding bikes that I've ridden. Wabis are also specced with no nonsense but high quality components where nothing really needs to be replaced out of the box, which can't be said for a lot of other complete bikes. To put how nice Wabis are in perspective, the Aventa Matero that I rode today with a carbon fork, a carbon seat post, and an aluminum frame set weighs in at 19 pounds, which is certainly respectable. My new Wabi Special, on the other hand, is a full steel frame set and has no carbon components and weighs in at 17.5 pounds. That's 1.5 pounds lighter than an aluminum bike with a carbon fork. It sounds too good to be true, but it's not. Wabi leaves very little to be desired when it comes to bikes. So if you're looking for your end all be all steel fixed gear for street riding, be sure to check out Wabi Cycles at the link at the top of the description. And if you haven't ridden your bike today, whether that's an Aventin or a Wabi or anything else, stop watching me right now because life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.